Hey, Sam, are you, but you are technically a fake Muslim, too? Listen, that OP Bilal, the reality is, given my, uh, given my upbringing, given my development, given my family, given where I was born, where I was raised, not born, because I'm an anger baby, but given where I was raised, which is pretty much his birth, I am infinitely more Muslim, I guess, culturally, than Andrew Tate ever is. Here's my comment uh, in reply to Hassan Abi. Uh, I think he's a relative of the Young Turks, I'm not sure. Anyways, of Sank or something like that. Anyways, Hassan Abi, I don't assume that you might listen to this. If you do, great. Uh, would love to have the Muslim community engage you further. <clears throat> but um, I think your comment, with all the respect, shows that you are, are ignorant of some of the core principles of Islam. If we use your definition here, then that would mean that you're knowledgeable than some of the early Muslims, Muslims, including the Sahaba, right? Because the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they accepted Islam in the early stages, right? If you know Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, especially Abu Bakr, radiallahu an, uh, with very little knowledge, very little upbringing in Islam, right? Now, why? Um, again, I'm not trying to be arrogant here with you. Uh, again, I, I think I just want to help uh, bring about education on this matter to you and your viewers. See, Islam, because it means submission, you're, you are submitting yourself, not just blindly, This is there's, because Islam is also on the other spectrum. Islam is against blind following or blind submission, especially when it comes to belief. Um, but you're submitting yourself to monotheism. Tawheed, right? And that includes worship. That includes um, understanding the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That includes the, the, uh, uh, following the messenger, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, again, I know, I know you think in this, from one particular angle, you're more uh, familiar with Islam than Andrew Tate, right? In the same way, maybe an Orientalist, Orientalist might think they're more educated, on Islam, but from an Islamic lens, from a Muslim lens, and I'm going to even expound on this to, to, to show you why the Orientalist, Orientalist view is flawed. Uh, you can never be more educated, nor more um, uh, uh, Muslim than Andrew Tate. Now, why is the Orientalist approach flawed? And and with all due respect, I don't even know if you've you've studied Orientalism itself. Would love to hear what you have to say about this matter, but um, and if you haven't read Edward Said, uh, Edward Said, maybe you should look into that as well because uh, Edward Said, by the way, is a Christian Arab who's uh, and there's also Wa'il Wa Halak who's actually pointed out a lot of the flaws with uh, Orientalism. But the Orientalist flaw is a is, the Orientalist Orientalist approach is flawed because it looks at um, it, it takes a secular Western approach to Islamic knowledge. Now this. This, um, you know, this is called a fallacy, right, in philosophy, because you're not trying to understand a particular subject from the way that people understand it, or that region understands it. You just look at it through your own, uh, you know, someone just looks at it through their own ethnocentric lens. And so what happens with, with, with the Orient, Orientalists is they just treat Islam like, or the Quran like a novel, you know, and they build assumptions before you know, that there's no way that this could be from any miraculous source. It must be just purely secular. Uh, all of our science, you know, from our textbooks, that's all valid. So they never even challenged their own assumptions. And there was a professor. Uh, again, I don't think you'll any. You're, you'll, you'll, I don't think you'll believe any Eastern sources, with all due respect. Uh, and and just it just to th that's some food for thought, by the way, for you. Why don't why don't people like yourself ever accept any Eastern sources at all? Almost discredit all of them. But there was there was a, a Western professor who did a, a, a talk on Khalid and Walid recently, and I don't, I don't agree with the, his talk. By the way, I think he made some some mistakes, but he did make a few good points in that talk in the beginning, where he said it's almost racist to think that you know we can't accept anything from the East, the Eastern sources, and that we you know we can just look at uh, the Islamic world through our own Western lens. And, and what's going to happen there is that you're going to end up coming up to, with a lot, of, a lot of conclusions, a lot of the wrong conclusions. So in summary, Orientalism, like the approach that you're taking, you know, 
whether it's you're saying, you're saying here you're culturally more Muslim uh, from your upbringing, you understand the language, maybe some of the the terminology that Islam uses, um, some of the cultural uh, traditions and approaches. Honestly, uh, believe me, that that is never what Islam and Muslims, Islam or or Muslims, uh, Islam is about. In fact, there's even an aspect in Islam that is iconoclastic, which basically means that is you know we're we're allowed to adopt those those parts of traditions. That is in conflict with this with with Islam, but Islam will also uh, refuse to accept particular tradition traditions or cultures, right? Some aspects of culture. So again, uh, you know, there's uh, we have Turkish culture, we have Pakistani culture, Arab culture. It's all fine and dandy so long as it doesn't contradict with Islam. But there are some aspects that Islam came to refute, and so this is a very key point for you to understand. That you know, and I've, I've, I've just came back from Turkey recently, and I and like I said, I'm you know we can get into a deeper discussion, but even an Islamic scholar, if you at the end of the day, if you have a deep intellectual discussion with them, you know they they will even say, yeah, this this certain aspects of the Islam that I practice are purely cultural. This is not a part of Islam. This is not this is not wajib. This is not fard. This is not something you have to do. It's purely cultural. And so, yeah, you might have that traditional understanding. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't know how much understanding you have through from the Quran and Sunnah. And I really, I don't mean like a slogan type here. I really mean something that all of Ahl Sunnah or Sunni Muslims believe. So, again, I'm, it may, it may, my message may not have been clear. Uh, I've seen you comment on Islam here and there. Sometimes you say positive things about Muslims. Sometimes you, you talk about Islamophobia. Sometimes you talk about how Muslims are, there's misrepresentation about Islam and Muslims, which we appreciate. And then you also try to, to talk about a balanced, a balanced, you know, you also try to take, or as you claim, a, a balanced approach. But I think that there is a false dichotomy because you're really yourself looking at Islam through that secular lens. And, 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 and again, I'm trying to be respectful here. I, you know, again, <laughs> you are obviously a talented guy, but um, we would love to engage you further, further on this topic and, and to, to see exactly why what you might have wrong about Islam and Muslims. Take care. All the best. Cheers.